us. We are on part two of Everyone His Day. Everyone His Day. We started out this uh, lesson asking the question, what pagan, t pagan, pagan tradition do you ask people to blow their breath all over your food, then you stand around waiting to eat a piece of it? And Yahweh had us start looking at uh, birthdays and everyone celebrating his day and Yahweh uh, took us to uh, some different resources that he gave us to show us the origin of birthdays and that they actually are indeed not from Yahweh and they're something that Yahweh. Yahweh does not encourage us to celebrate. Matter of fact, he gave no birth dates of anybody in the Bible of his people and we had read in the first show, and we're going to read this again, this um, lady Linda Reynolds Lewis wrote a book and it's called Birthdays and she says birthdays have been celebrated for thousands of years in early civilizations where the development of a calendar made an organized reckoning of birthdays possible the horoscopes of ruling monarchs their successors and rivals had to be cast with care and birthday omens meticulously examined for the prospects of the mighty would affect the prospects of the entire society. By the time of Ptolemy the fourth, the fifth, this practice was well established. Ptolemy, the ever living, the beloved Ptah, the son of two brother gods was born on the fifth day of the month Dios. And this day was, in consequence, the beginning of great prosperity and happiness of all living men and women. And we had gone to Genesis, the 40th chapter, where we looked to see that in the Bible is recorded Pharaoh, a Pharaoh, celebrating his birthday. I also gave you a handout. And there was another Pharaoh, the one that this lady referred to in her book, Ptolemy the Fifth. And it says a Greek family of Egyptian pharaohs. Why? Because they controlled Greece as well as Egypt and other countries. But it says on this handout, Ptolemy V was an ancient Egyptian king. This what this lady was talking about in her birthdays. So we know that the Egyptians celebrated birthdays. It was common in his day for kings and rulers to have their horoscopes made by astrologers and their birthdays were considered very important omens of the future. So you see, and our people were in, in slavery in ancient Egypt and this is where they started celebrating those different paganisms. All right? Now we want to look at, we had looked at the example of a birthday that was celebrated in the Old Testament. Now we want to go to the New Testament, to Matthews, the 14th chapter. Matthews on the 15th right, tell it like it is. Okay. And this is an example of a birthday celebration in the New Testament. Okay. And this is the birthday celebration of King Herod. King Herod, and this was a king that was notorious for his wickedness. Yeah. Matthews, the 14th chapter. Again, you cannot read about any of Yahweh's people celebrating their birthdays no, you cannot. in the Bible. Why? Because that's not something that Yahweh's people did. Okay. And that's not something that they're supposed to be doing now. Either. That's right, right, right. So the answer no. 14. And let's start reading at verse 1, please. Matthew 14 and verse 1 reads, At that time Herod the Tetra or heard the fame of Yeshua too, and said unto his servants, This is Yachanan the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Verse 3. For Herod had laid hold on Yachanan and bound him, and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother's Philip's wife. Alright, verse 4. For Yachanan said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. Alright, so it says, 
At that time, Herod the Tetrarch, Shammah of the fame of Yahshua, and he amarred to his abbot, this is Yachanan the Baptist, he's risen from Hamu. And therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him, while he was feeling guilty. Yeah, right? yeah. It says, for Herod had laid hold on Yachanan and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, who was his sister-in-law. And after his brother divorced her, then he took her and married her. Okay. It's, it says, his aunt Philip's Isha, for Yachanan Amara told him, it's not Torah, it's not lawful for you to marry her. All right, verse 5. And when he would have put him to, to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. And he was. He was a man of Yahweh. That's right. But it said he would have put him to my vat because of what he said about him. Okay. Even though it was true. Yeah. He didn't want to hear anybody telling them what the truth was because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. He said, right. but they counted him as a Nabi, and he was. All right, verse 6. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and please Herod. Now here is this man Herod. Again, he's not a, a follower of Yahweh. Right, right. He's celebrating his birthday. Okay. It says, when his birthday was Shemar kept, Habath, or the daughter of his sister-in-law that he had married, danced before them and pleased Herod. So we lusted after this girl, liking the way she looked or whatever it yeah, was, it's dancing it's in front of him. Yeah. All right, verse 7. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Now and then it says he pleased her or, or she pleased him, him lusting and looking after her. And then he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. Well, her mother had already pushed her up <laughs> to ask for something. Okay, verse 8. But this is at a birthday party now. Yeah, verse yeah. 8. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. All right, so it said her mother had already wired her up. Uh -huh. So her mother knew, okay, he's, he <laughs> lusted after his, sis, his, his uh, sister-in-law, married her. He's lusting after her daughter. So she had already told her. She understood this, this lust factor and yeah. said, you please him and you dance, and then if he asks you, what do you want? Right, and right. Tell him I want Yakanan's head cut okay. off, and I want it brought to me on a plate. She being before Musar of her M, a mark, give me here Yakanan Baptist's head in a charger. All right, go cut this prophet's head off. Yep. Verse 9. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at me, he commanded it to be given her. Verse 10. And he sent and beheaded Yachanan in the prison. Yes, he did. So at King Herod's birthday party, one of Yahweh's greatest servants, Yachanan the baptizer, yeah. got his head cut off. Again, we saw at the Egyptian birthday party, either the butler or the baker, one of them got his yeah, head yeah. cut off. In the 5th century before Mashiach, the Greek historian Herodotus, describing the festival of the Persians, wrote, It is their custom to honor their birthday above all other days. And on this day, they furnish their table in a more plentiful manner than at other times. Uh -huh. The rich then produce an ox, a horse, a camel, or a donkey, roasted whole in an oven, but the poor produce smaller cattle. So the Chinese mark their birthdays for thousands of years, starting from their first year of life. They match the year with their astrological calendar. Remember Yahweh showed us how astrology, yeah. which is a religion, people think it's a science, but it's really a religion. Okay. It's all involved with birthdays and different things and charting the course for your life. It said, they match the year with their astrological calendar and celebrate the birthdays with noodles. The longer a strand of noodle one can get into his mouth, that's thought to represent a long life to come. Let's go to Job, the third chapter. Job in the Old Testament, the third chapter. So Origen of Alexandria in 245 A.D. wrote, None of the saints 
can be found who ever held a feast or a banquet upon his birthday. Okay. None of them. None That's of right. Yahweh's people. None. It said, or rejoiced on the day when his son or daughter was born. Right, right. He said, but sinners rejoice and make merry on such days. For we find in the Old Testament that Pharaoh, king of Egypt, celebrated his birthday with a feast. And that Herod in the New Testament did the same. He said, but the saints not only neglect to mark the day of their birth with festivity, but also filled with the Holy Spirit, they curse this day after the example of Job and Jeremiah and David. All right? We're in Job. Let's go to the third chapter. So this man, Origen, is saying in contrast, Yahweh's people cursed the day they were born instead of celebrating it. Job 3. And let's start reading at verse 1, please. Uh, yeah. Job 3 and verse 1 reads, After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. He did what? He cursed his day. Mm -hmm. Remember the title of the lesson, Everyone His Day. That's right. He's talking about birthday, That's the day right. he was born. Right, right. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his yom, the day that he was born. All right, and now he's a righteous man. Right, right. After this, open Job his mouth and cursed his yom the day that he was born. All right, and now he's a righteous man. He's a servant of Yahweh. Verse 2. And Job spake and said, verse 3, Let the day perish within I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man child conceived. So he's saying, And Job, Amar, and Amar, let Hayam perish wherein I was born. And Halayel, in which it was Amar, there is a Adam Zakar conceived. So he's really, he's not blowing up balloons no, no. And, and celebrating no. and, and, and eating cake. He's saying, let the day perish where I was born and the night in which it was said, there's a man child conceived. That's the total opposite. Right, right. All right, verse 4. Let that day be darkness. Let not Elohim regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. All right, so he's cursing this day. Let's go to Jeremiah or Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. These are servants of Yahweh. These are righteous people of yep, Yahweh, yep. which we are among now. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 20. We, we might have not known this before, but right. now Yahweh is teaching us Hallelujah. his ways. Right. Not the ways of Babylon. Right. Praise. Jeremiah 20. We want to start at verse 14. Hallelujah. Jeremiah yeah. 20. And let's read verse 14, please. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. All right. Okay, here we go now. And when people talk about happy birthday, <laughs> they call themselves sending forth blessings. Yep. But here is Jeremiah, another servant of Yahweh. And remember, we just looked at this servant of Yahweh a Yachanan the baptizer, he got his head cut off on right, somebody's right. birthday. Right, right. He said, Curse be Hayam wherein I was born. Let not Hayam wherein my M bear me be Barak. Uh -huh. So so who's who, who are the ones that are off? It's not Yahweh's people. It's the world. Yep. The ways of Babylon that are off. Alright, verse 15. Curse be the man who brought tidings to my father saying, a man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. So he said almost the same thing Job said. Yep, yep. Said, curse be our Adam who brought tidings to my Abba Amar. As a, a Adam Zakar is born unto thee, making him very glad. He said, curse be the day I was born. Let's go to Old Testament Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. So these people and we have read where Yahweh said the day of our death is better than the day of our birth. Yes, he did. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. So who's right, Yahweh? Yahweh, all the time. Ecclesiastes 7, he, 
He said, and it's right in here, we're going to read Ecclesiastes 7, and we're going to read one verse, verse 1. Ecclesiastes uh, yeah. 7. And let's read verse 1, please. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. And the what? He said, a tob shim is better than precious ointment, and hayam of my vet, the day that we die. Then Hayam of Akkad's birth. Uh -huh. In the day of your birth. This is what Yahweh said. Uh-huh. Thus says Yahweh. It's not important how you come here, it's how you leave. That's here. right, leave with him. Let's go to the New Testament, to John, the first chapter of Yachanan. So they read, like we're reading in the Bible, we're gonna read, what the Bible said to celebrate the day of Yahshua's death. Not as some people try to lie and say it's on December 20th. Right, 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 right. That's right. We don't know when the birthday is of any of the, the prophets, any of Yahweh's people. And that's all right. Why? Because we're not supposed to be celebrating their birthdays anyway. <laughs> right. All right. John 1, we'll read one verse, verse 29. Hallelujah. The next day. Yachanan seeth Yeshua coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, which taketh away the sins of the world. All right, now, Yeshua is, taught, is called the Lamb of Elohim, the Lamb of Yahweh. Right, right. It says the next day, Yachanan, this is Yachanan the baptized, the same one that Herod cut his head off on his birthday. He seeth Yeshua coming unto him, and Amar, behold, the Lamb of Elohim which taketh away the hata of the world. Yep. Now let's go to the Old Testament in Exodus so we can see that on the Pesach or Passover, Exodus 12, that this lamb that was killed represented Yahshua. Yes, it did. So here's Yachanan in the Kadash Barit, the New Testament, saying, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim which taketh away the sin of the world. Right, right. When Yahweh instituted the Passover, Yep, yep. So that our forefathers in the land of Mizraim, the death angel could pass over them uh -huh. and they wouldn't be killed. And he said that this lamb actually represented Yahshua. Yes, it did. Praise the body Yah. Exodus, the 12th chapter. And we want to start at verse 11. Exodus 12. And let's read verse 11, please. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. So this is the lamb and it represented Yahshua. Yes, it did. We just saw in the New Testament when Yahshua came to the earth, he was come as a lamb to be sacrificed. That's right. To go to Calvary to That's die right. for us. Well, this is Yahweh showing us in the Old Testament how he set it up. Hallelujah. And what the pattern was. Right, right. Because the blood was to cover our forefathers yes, until was. Yeshua came yes, and shed did. his blood. So then his blood went back to cover them from the beginning and it moved forward to cover all of us. Hallelujah. When we come to Yahweh. Yes. All right, he said, thus shall you eat it, talking about the lamb, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste, for it is Yahweh's Pesah. And Yahshua is Yahweh's Pesah. Yes, it is. All right, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Mizraim this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim, both man and beast, and against all the Elohims of Mizraim, I will ex execute judgment. I am Yahweh. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Mizraim. So this was serious. Just yep. like now, we're yep. up under Yeshua's blood. Yep. So the plagues are passing over us. Yes, they are. Praise says, Peter, the mighty God. I will God. pass through the land of Mizraim, this Lyell, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Mizraim, both Adam and beast, and against all the elves of Mizraim, I will execute Shaphat, I am Yahweh. Mm -hmm. he, remember he had done all those plagues? Yeah, yeah. And in the last plague, he said, all right, I'm going to kill all the firstborn right, right. in the house that don't have this 
blood of that lamb, That's right. which was representing Pesach. Yeshua, on their doorposts. He mm. said, and Hadam shall be to you for a token upon all high by it where ye are. So whoever didn't put the, the blood on the outside of their doorpost, the firstborn in that house got killed. Yep, yep, Whether yep. it was Israel or, or, right. or Egypt. No, 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 they were in no. disobedience, then the firstborn in their house got killed. Yep, yep. He said, and when I see how damn I will pass over you, or pace off you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Misraim. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Forever. So this is why we do the Pesach once a year. Right, right. Unlike those people that do communion, <laughs> and they do it, you know, either every Sunday or yeah. once a month. No, yeah. this, is, this is a once a year memorial. It says, yeah. this yam shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall shemar it a moed or cag to Yahweh throughout your generation. You shall shemar it a moed by an ordinance forever. All right, so if birthdays are to be celebrated, why did Yahweh leave the date of his own son's birth out of the Right, pagan? right, right. Fossilized customs, the pagan source of popular customs by Lou White, and again, we had uh, lifted this up so you could see it, so we're going to be reading a little bit from that again. Okay. And now we're talking about people say Yeshua's birthday. The son of Yahweh is on December 25th. Sure it's really is, not so. because Yahweh didn't put it in the That's Bible. That's right. He didn't tell you. All right. So now, fossilized customs says Christmas is really two words. Christos, which is Greek, and Missa, which is Latin. Christos means anointed. And Missa means depart. Uh -huh. Both of these words were inherited from pagans. He says the Mashiach was never called Christ in his own tongue or language. The word Christmas means anointed depart. Okay. And is seen abbreviated as Xmas. Yeah. The X stands for Christos. Missa is Latin for depart. That was the last word spoken at a Catholic Mass. And so the word for the liturgical procedure seems to be from that. It was tacked on to the word Christ because the mass ritual on December 25th was called Christ's Mass. But even the mass existed before Catholicism. It was what the pagan priests of Mithraism and Medeanism called their Mass of the Dead which was a ghastly sacramental ritual of animal and human sacrifice okay. on an indoor altar with the pagan worshipers assembled in two rows of benches with a center aisle. The word abracadabra was used during the Mithraic uh -huh. Mystery Mass when they transubstantiated a, transubstantiated a sun-shaped disc of bread into the sun and ate it. Uh -huh. The Medeans also had seven sacraments, among which were holy matrimony, the Eucharist, sun disc bread waver, confession, holy orders, and the mass of the dead itself. They were sun worshipers from which a church father, Augustine, had come from. He said, are we still talking about Christmas? He said, sure. Huh. Yes, we are. He said, Saturnalia, also called Paganalia, was an ancient belief that the winter sun was slowly dying because it was seen rising further and further to the south each morning. Solstice means sun stop. By December 25th, the ancient world solstice, it could be recognized as beginning to return northward and was said to be reborn. Okay. See all these pagan superstitions? Yeah, yeah. It marked the time for a celebration that lasted for days. Carved idols were exchanged. Dolls. <laughs> yeah, it's ready. People hung yeah, wreaths on their doors mm -hmm. or wore them around their necks. An echo of the symbol of Nimrod, 
the branch of a tree twisted in a circle, okay. symbolic of the shape of the sun and the annual cycle. Huh. All right, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 16. Jeremiah, or Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 16. Verse, verse 19. Jeremiah uh, yeah. 16. And let's read verse 19, please. O oh, Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Huh. Yeah, and we huh. have. Right, because we got estranged from Yahweh, cut off from Yahweh, and we inherited lies. Yeah. We grew up believing these lies. Yeah. Oh, Yahweh, my coag and my fortress and my refuge in high yam of affliction, I go and shall come unto thee from the ends of our area and shall mark. Surely our Abba have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein no profit. So, fossilized custom says the rebirth of the sun came nine months, a gestation cycle, after Easter. Huh. When the earth mother was impregnated by the sun <laughs> at the crossing of the vernal or Venusian equinox. When Mithras, the sun, slayed the bull, the constellation of Taurus, and the sun moved into the next constellation, bringing warmer weather. Huh. All right, let's go to Old Testament Isaiah, 28th chapter. Isaiah, the 28th chapter. And we want to read one verse, verse 15, Isaiah 28, and let's read verse 15, please. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol are we at agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies huh. our refuge, and on the falsehood have we hid ourselves. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah. It says, because ye have a mark, we have made a bereavement with my path. Mm. And those people that are doing that, if they don't separate from it, that, that's where they're headed for. Right, right. The second death. And with Sheol are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, <laughs> and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Mm. And again, Yahweh is uncovering us. Uh, our eyes. He's bringing right, us right. to the truth and we want to know the truth. Hallelujah. He's bringing us to the light. Fossilized custom says we are called out of ignorance and repent of observing Easter, okay. birthdays, Christmas, Halloween, Sunday, the Nimrod-based year cycle, and so on. But we don't show hatred for people who are still trapped That's in right. here. That's but right. love. Hallelujah. Said Nimrod, Constantine, Exiguus, and many others rule the world from the grave when practices they established are still observed by people today. Yep. All right, let's go in the uh, Old Testament to Job or Job, the first chapter. So you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and find no mention of any of Yahweh's people celebrating birthdays. That's right. Now, the one servant of Yahweh, Job was a servant of Yahweh, and we see him in a frenzy, whipping himself up and just sacrificing, 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 uh -huh. trying to cover up the sin of his children. And it looks like they were celebrating birthdays. Job, the first chapter, and let's start at verse 1, please. Job 1 and verse 1 reads, There was a man in the land of us, whose name was Job, and that man 
was perfect and upright, and one that feared Elohim and eschewed evil. Now, here is Yahweh letting us know now, this is a Tamim, this is an upright, right, this right. is a Sadiq, this right, is a right. righteous man, this is a servant of Yahweh. It says, there was an Adam in the land of us whose Shem was Yod, and that Adam was mature, he's talking about spiritually, and Tamim, right, right. upright, he was righteous, and one that respected, reverenced Elohim, and eschewed or avoided rock or evil. This is the, this is the type of people we are. Hallelujah. So there was nothing wrong with him. Now you're going to see what he was doing in response to his children. Okay. Celebrating birthdays. Right. Verse two. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. He had ten children. Verse three. His substance was so was his substance also was seven thousand sheep and 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 sheep donkeys, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So Yom was rich. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. and, and Yahweh doesn't say that we can't have anything. That's right. But now the things can't have us. That's it. We be so greedy to wear. That's it. We get Yahweh out of first place. Right, right. And we're seeking after the things putting them in first place. Right, right. Yeah. right. Well, verse 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day. His day. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. So now they're talking about his day. They're talking about their birthday. Right, right. It says his, his bond went and feasted in their viet or houses every archive his yam and sent in Korah for their three baths, their sisters to eat and drink with them. Just right, all right. the ten children join in right, with, right. This, right. with this paganism. Now, what did this righteous man do? It doesn't say he was at the party. He's, uh -uh. He was doing something different. Uh -huh. All right, verse 5. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed Elohim in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Alright, so now, it was ten of them. He was doing it continually because it was ten birthdays, right, right? right? It said, and it was so when Hayama, their feasting was going about, when they were doing all this celebrating, that Job sent and sanctified them. How did he do it? He rose up early in the morning. He offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. Because they were going to each other's houses. Right, there was right. ten of them. Right. So he was doing ten of them. Well, you got ten birthdays throughout the year. That's uh -huh. a whole lot of sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. It said, he offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all for Job Amar. It may be that my bond have hata'a and cursed Elohim in their pay, in their mind. Thus did Job continually. Okay. He had to offer 10 of them on each birthday. That's a lot of offering. Yeah, he did it continually. Yeah. But you notice it said, he didn't say nothing about the daughters. It may be that my son. Right. Okay, why? Because he understood that the man is, is in a certain position. That's right. And they shouldn't have been invited, inviting their sisters over to their right, house. Right. Either way, when you read the, the factual account, you'll see that all of them ten children got killed. Yep. Mm. All right, they opened the door, but that's why Job was running around sacrificing. Yep, yep, yep. Right, he didn't want anything right. to happen to them. But it did happen. All right, let's go to uh, Old Testament, Leviticus, the 18th chapter. So the Bible is silent on the dates of birth of every single servant of Yahweh. Right, right. The day of his people's births are not important in no, Yahweh's not. sight. No, they're not. Yahweh's people are warned not to follow customs which direct attention to themselves in a That's display it. of self-centeredness and ego. Leviticus 18 I'm going to read one verse. Leviticus 18. Let's read verse 30. Leviticus 18. And verse 30, please. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable, abominable 
customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Okay. Now you say keep my ordinances. Right. Therefore, yeah, you should shall you shema my ordinance that you commit not any account of these abominable customs. Mm. Well, the birthdays are included in the abominable yeah, customs yeah, yeah. which were committed before you. And he says okay. in another place that he spewed the inhabitants of the land out yes, he did. for doing these abominable yes, customs. He did. So we can't as Israel think that when we Come. get to the land or, or what were there ever position we're in and we go to doing the abominable customs, you're gonna get spewed out just like the people yep, yep. that were in the land in. before you. Right. Why? Because you're doing the same thing. Doesn't yep. matter whether you're right. Israel. Right. right. You said, and that you defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Let's okay. go to the New Testament to Luke, the second chapter. So not only do Yahweh's people not celebrate their birthdays, but they do not celebrate their children's birthday yep. to symbolize them getting to a certain point in their lives. Right, right. The transition to maturity. And this is a scripture that they take. Some people take and they say, okay, so you're supposed to have a, a birthday party. Not only do they have birthday parties up to the age of 12, but they say this one is even more significant than the others. All right, but it's all paganism. Luke 2, and we want to start at verse 41. Hallelujah. Luke 2, Luke 2 and 41. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. Now, what were they doing up there in, in Jerusalem? Pesach. Right. The Passover. Right. Mm -hmm. It said his parents went to Jerusalem every year at Hamoed or Hakeg of HaPesach. They were celebrating the Passover. That's right. All right. They had nothing to do with Yeshua's birthday. <laughs> right, right. Because Yahweh didn't give it. All right. But now you're going to see. It tells what age Yeshua was. All right, mm -hmm. verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. All right, and what is it talking about? The Passover. Right, and right. right connected to that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It says when he was 12 years old. So you have some people that took this 12-year mark, and they just... Incorporated that into the pagan practice of celebrating uh -huh. birthdays, and they made a whole different tradition out of that. Verse 43. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Yeshua tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Yosef and his mother knew not of it. All right, verse 44. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him, sought him among their king, kinsfolk and acquaintance. Verse 45. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. All right, so what, what these people have done is infused something else into this. Right, right. At the age of 12, where Yeshua was, the three days they didn't realize that Yeshua wasn't with them, and they had to come back, uh, Yeshua's parents had to come back to Jerusalem and get him. Verse 46. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. 47. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answered. So then they say, okay, this symbolizes the, the young boy. And they say the girl, where they're transitioning into being an adult. Uh -huh. And so they set up these ceremonies yeah, yeah. for both of them to mark that special birthday. But the whole thing is, they're celebrating a, a pagan That's practice. That's it. All right. Well, in the New Testament, let's go to Matthew's the sixth chapter. So the proof that birthday celebrations originate in paganisms makes a difference whether Yahweh's people observe them or not. We observe no pagan customs. None. None. 
Birthdays concentrate attention on the birthday person, glorifying and exalting him, having people bring him presents yeah. and pay homage to him. Right, right. This fosters a spirit of self worship. Yes, it does. Matthew 6, going to read one verse, verse 2. Hallelujah. Yeah. Matthew 6 and verse 2 reads Therefore, when thou doest the um, thy arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues mm. and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. All right, and they, they do when you you having that birthday celebration. You're sending out people sending out invitations, and they come and uh -huh. we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. Uh -huh. And that the the birthday is all about the person, yeah, right. that's the center of attention. He said, therefore, when you do your own, do not sound the shofar before you. Birthday holding your own birthday party. That's sound the shofar. Right, right, right. You. Tell everybody to come and celebrate me. It says, as the hypocrites do in the temples and in the streets, that they may have kabod or glory of Adam. Right. He said, truly I am on to you. They have their reward. Now, if that's all you want, <laughs> right. then you can have that. When New Testament, let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. So, birthday celebrations create pride. Yes, it does. And the wrong kind of pride. Romans 12. We need one verse, verse 3. Romans 12. Uh, Luke, yeah. And let's read verse 3, please. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly mm. than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as Elohim hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now Yahweh wants you to, he says, you know, uh, love everyone as you love yourself. Yep, so yep. he doesn't want you to despise yourself. But then again, again, he said, don't think too highly of yourself. Right, right, he said, right. I am I through the hand given unto me to every Adam that is among you. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. According as Yahweh had dealt to every Adam the measure of giving right, right. So whatever good we have is from Yahweh. Yeah. And we don't need to go patting ourselves on the back and, <laughs> and thinking that we're all that. All right? Because we're nothing without Yahweh. That's it. All right? We're in Romans. Let's go to the uh, eighth chapter. So it should be plain that the people of Yahweh do not observe their birthdays. Okay. They do not make a big deal out of them. They don't hold parties to celebrate them. And birthday celebrations are not among the biblical customs commanded to be observed in the Bible. That's right. You, Romans the 8th chapter. Y'all right, right, tell it like it is. So this life on earth is a struggle to overcome the flesh for disciples. Okay. Romans 8, and let's read verse 7, please. Hallelujah. Because the carnal mind is en enmity against Elohim, for it is not the subject to the law of Elohim, neither indeed can be. It says, because the natural pain yeah. is an enemy against Yahweh. Yeah, it is. For it's not subject to Hatarah of Elohim, neither indeed can be. That's why, okay, these birthday celebrations, they feel good. It's celebrating me and, you know, nobody may pay attention to you out in the world. <laughs> but then, yeah, and, and, and I'm going to take my, some people won't use their days except they say, okay, well, my birthday's coming yeah. up. So I'm, I'm going to be sure I'm going to take my birthday. Right, 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 right. He said, the natural mind is an enemy against Yahweh. So some people will not like this lesson. Why? Because the natural mind not subject to the law of Yahweh. It That's don't right. want to be subject to the law of Yahweh. Right. It wants to do what feels good to it. And if it feels good, they don't care whether birthdays are pagan or not. Right, right. They're going to celebrate. We're in Romans. Let's go to the 7th chapter. But as Yahweh's people, we learn to subdue yes. the pulls in our flesh. Right? Oh, yeah. Our flesh tries to get us to do something that's not right. Right, right. Or just because it feels so good right. when it's against Yahweh, 
We cut it out. Romans 7th chapter. And let's start at verse 14. Hallelujah. Romans 7 and verse 14 reads, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now we're on this earth now, and we understand we're dealing with some spiritual laws, but at the same time we're on this earth, and there's different natural things that will be pulling at us on yeah, this yeah. earth. Yes, yes. It yeah. says, For we have died that Hatorah is spiritual. But we still got this flesh and blood body sold under Hatah. But now Yahweh's given us Ruach Kakadash yes, to yes. control the pulls of this body. So we don't have to do what the body's telling no, we us do not, to do. Not anymore. But we need to recognize, don't be pretending like you're not in the middle of this. <laughs> This struggle is going on. Right. All right. Because you always show you how to get stronger and how, how to get better at the struggle. So you always win the struggle. All right. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that I do I. Now, Shaul is talking about the struggle. Yep, yep. Where there are times when you want to do right. And then because you got this, this human body, you might end up doing something that's like, oh, why did I do that? And then you gotta repent. That's it. He's saying, for that which I do, I allow not, but for what I would, that do I not. And what I say nay, that do I. So you come time, sometimes get caught in this, this thing. Battle. And you get Struggle. better to where you get caught less and less. And right, when right. you're swift to repent, Hallelujah. then it, it, it's even better. All right? But there are things that we don't want to do that sometimes we end up doing. Uh -huh. Verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. All right? So we don't have a problem with Yahweh telling us what's wrong and what's right. Right, right. It says, and if we do something that we know is not right, we still consent, consent unto Hatarah of the law that it is told. Hallelujah. It's good. Yep. All right? Okay. Yahweh, I'm glad you showed me. All right. I'm glad you convicted me. It's good. All right? So we're, we're still obedient. We cons we, we're not kicking against it. Uh -uh. All right? We agree with the law. Verse 17. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right, so there was something in me that led me to do that, and Yahweh wants me to see it. Right, right, stop right, doing right, it. right, right. For then, now then, is no more I that do it, but Hata I that dwells in okay. me. And Yahweh's going to show me and you how to get control yep. of that. Turn sin. It out. So we don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. All right, verse 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. No. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find that it's not, not in us without Ruach HaKadosh. Right. Now right. it's in us. Right. It says, for I yada that in me that is in my flesh, this flesh and blood body uh -huh. we have, we're going to have it until we leave this earth, I said. dwells no told thing, no. no good thing. Except now, those of us that have come to Yahweh, we got a good thing in us, which is Yahweh's power source. That's right. Ruach. But without Yahweh, huh. it's no good thing <laughs> in our flesh. No good thing. It says, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is told by find not. Okay. We can never do but right. We ain't got the power Some source. people, they say, okay, when I get myself straight, then I'm going to Yahweh. And then you'll never get yeah, yourself right. straight because be it's right. not in you. Right. You don't have it in you. It has to be put in you. Until your... you come to Yahweh. That's it. We rock our Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. So you see the struggle? You see uh -huh. the toll that I, I want to do, I'm not doing it. But the rock that I don't want to do, I sometimes end up doing it because of this flesh and blood body. But again, we get stronger and stronger. Yes, and you yes, are we are. controlled, yes, so you do that less yep. and less. Yep. All right, verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 21. I find then a law that 
when I would do good, evil is present with me. Uh -huh. So it's always going to be that that push, that that the resistance yep. there. Yep. And Yahweh gave us Royal Kakadash so we can override yes, yes. That, that badness Just and always it. choose to do the good. In it. I find then a Torah that when I would do Torah, Ra is present with me. Why? Because we're in the world and Done right. Hasatan <laughs> world and he wants to whisper in your ear <laughs> the the <coughs> wrong thing to do. Yeah. Alright? Uh, let's go back to Romans the eighth chapter. So disciples do not celebrate the day they put on their fleshly tabernacle, which is this body that we have. Okay. But they celebrate the day when they're gonna put it off and be clothed with a new body. Romans 8. Gonna read verse 23. Uh, That's the yeah. day we're looking for. Yeah, we yeah. put off this right, right. body. Romans 8, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Ruach, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Oh yes, and that glorified body yep. is gonna be something else. A body that will never die, yes. a body that won't get old. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which had the first fruits of the Ruach. We yep. get the first fruits of the Ruach, Yahweh's Ruach HaKadosh. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption <laughs> to wit the redemption of our Gibeah, yeah. our new body. Yeah. So we're not celebrating this fleshly tabernacle uh -uh. that we got. It's fades we're going to celebrate the one that we're going to get. Now we're waiting on. We're going to the Old Testament to Psalms 34. So this life is trials and tests. Yeah, folks. yeah. It's all told with Yahweh. Psalms 34. Praise to my yeah. Enjoy the journey. Yeah, it's not time to be celebrating to be being born here. Other than that you found Yahweh and now you know what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah, the rebirth of Yahweh. Other than that, it's like uh, the man said, it's like drinking muddy water and sleeping in a hollow wall <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Psalms 34, and we want to read verse 19. Hallelujah. Psalms 34, let's read verse 19, please. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but Yahweh delivered him out of them yes, all. Yes, all right, so yes, in this yes, life, yes, yes, we are afflicted. Yep. Did it Why? In small because world. we're in the middle of a, a crooked and perverse generation. Yeah, that's it. Everybody's not serving Yahweh. Most people <laughs> yeah. are not. The majority. Uh, the majority are not serving Yahweh. Don't want to hear nothing about Yahweh. He says, so many are the afflictions of the Sadiq. But that's all right. It's all good. He always given us the, the capacity to deal yes, with it. Yes, he has. Yes, so he back will. to the New Testament to Acts. So many of them. Acts 14. And it says, Yahweh delivers us out of all the All the time, no matter what. He's just uh, showing us and forming our character within us. Yes, he is. Yes, he has. Praise to my God. If we had no resistance, then we'd have flabby muscles. Yeah. You know? Tight and taunt. Hallelujah. Walking in Ready to go against Hasatan. That's right. Acts 14. And we're going to read one verse. Verse uh, 22. Acts 14. And verse 22. Please. Hallelujah. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Elohim. All right, yeah. confirming our nephews of the disciples, that's us, and exhorting them to continue in high right. Don't that's stop, right. keep going day by day. Right. And that we must, through much tribulation, <laughs> much, again, this fleshly tabernacle, <laughs> enter into Hamalkuth of Elohim. But that's the path. That's, that's how you get that's there. It. All right, going through. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We must through much tribulation. Oh, uh, yeah. We're going in, though. We'll walk with you. That's right. Yeah, we said what in Psalm. Yea, do we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil, because uh -huh. Yahweh is with us. Yes, he is all we'll the time, no matter what. Right. So we, we don't celebrate being in this earthly body. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Oh, no. 
2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And we want to start at verse 8. 2 uh, Corinthians yeah. 4. And let's read verse 8, please. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Hey. We are perplexed, but not in despair. That right. Said, troubled on every side, yeah. but it's not getting to us. No, it's not. Not right. anymore. Verse 9. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. All right? Yeah. So if we come up and get some stuff, but that's all right. All right, it's not. Let it, let it roll off you just, like it's water just off the ducks. Us up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Verse 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Master Yeshua, that the life also of Yeshua might be made manifest in our body. Yeah. He said always bearing about uh, in the body the birth of Yeshua. No, the no, no. dying. The dying, look at that. The dying. The dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we said the day of your death is better than the yes, day of Yes, it is. supposed to always be. Always bearing about in Hagibiyah the dying of Adon Yahshua, yeah. that Hakai also of Yahshua may be made manifest in our Gibeah. Yep. Because we suffer greatly and often in the flesh, we do not glory in the day of our fleshly birth. All right, we're in the same uh, fourth chapter. Let's skip down to verse 16 and read 4 and 16. For which cause we faint not, yep. but Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes, it is. Yes, he is. So we understand that. Hey, the inward man is renewed day by right, day. Right, right. This, this outside body gets older, but right, that's, right. that's no never mind. Uh -uh. It means you're getting closer to Hallelujah. getting that other body. Hallelujah. 